It's Agatha Harkness' turn to face the road head on in the brand new episode of Agatha All Along, episode 5. But every week I join these ladies on the road, I'm faced with my own set of challenges. The biggest one, trying to just get through this show. It's a puzzler, because it's not outright bad, it's just so incredibly mediocre across the board. Like, things happen, they don't have any consequence, you don't care much about anyone in it because they're not really in any danger. Sure, some people are dying, some people are coming and going, but do I think they're really dead? No, because the MCU has all these stupid little loopholes now that they've established, and so I guess if you're looking for something to just be there, Agatha has you covered because it's just there. Let's talk about this episode briefly in a spoiler-filled recap. An episode or two back, these ladies had to use a summoning spell to bring a new green witch into the fold since their last one died. But since all these ladies seemed to be kind of winging it at the end of the day, they did not close the door for which they opened to bring the Green Witch in, thereby allowing the Salem Seven to come into the fold. That's right, the Salem Seven are introduced in this episode. They are apparently the children of the witches that Agatha had killed years and years earlier, taking their power for her own. We don't actually see that in this episode. It's not even a flashback. You have to watch the previously on to get that scene, which is just mind boggling to me that they wouldn't start this series with those events. Like give us a good recap of what Agatha has been up to over the course of her career as a witch, because then you show audiences how she had this incredible power once upon a time and lost it due to Wanda. Of course, if people watched WandaVision, they'll have some of that information, and they did do a scene about the coven back then, but still, this is a different show. And also, if you're really diving into this character, it would be good if you gave us a little bit more background on her. Side note, Katherine Hahn, still absolutely out of control with her arm movements. She's always like this. Arms are always out here, like they're trying to leave her body. Her lips are pursed more than ever, like a fish with a hook stuck in its mouth. Trying to get it out. Trying to get it out. Anyway, these seven new witches have entered the fray, and they're not happy with Agatha. They want her dead, and all these other people in the coven. All of them look the same. They have these black garbs all over, covering their faces, covering every part of them, pretty much. And they're all twisted and mangled and doing weird stuff. They're not scary or really threatening because this whole thing comes off like a Nickelodeon TV show, like a shitty version of Are You Afraid of the Dark? But the, here they are, and here I am watching it for some reason. I guess I'm just fascinated by how far we've come in the MCU to we're doing a show about a villain that briefly appeared in WandaVision and it follows her on her misadventures on this Wizard of Oz-esque boring escapade week to week where they go through these super lame, super easy to overcome obstacles. <laughs> like, all right, here we are again. We have an epic chase scene to start things out and by epic, I mean, it's gonna be each actress in front of a green screen pretending to be on a broomstick. It looks pretty bad. They take flight getting off the road. They've given themselves like two rules once they got into this place. Number one was never leave the road. Number two, I think was don't touch anything, but they've, they've broken both of these rules. They ripped off tree branches. They did a little spell and now they've taken flight. They managed to lose the Salem seven, but the road's not thrilled about them trying to escape, pulls them back down and right into the next challenge. And this one's going to be catered to Agatha. They're inside a little lodge with an 80s motif, and there's a Ouija board that they have to start communicating to the dead with. The first thing the board reveals is that Mrs. Hart is in the room with them, and she is channeled through Agatha. But not really. Agatha's just trolling them because she's scared or something. I don't know. I don't know what the hell this was. Agatha has 30 minutes to complete this quest, and she wasted like four of them pretending to be Mrs. Hart. It was a good impression, I'll give her that much. It was a good impression, but at what cost? What was the point? Shortly after, she is taken over by a real spirit. She starts jumping on the walls. She turns all ghoulish looking. She's fighting some of the other ladies. Side note, Teen Boy, whose identity has yet to be revealed, read off a bunch of rules for playing this Ouija game. He read like six or seven things off. 
They break all of them. I don't think there's any real consequences. Bullring Witch realizes that the only way to win this is to punish Agatha. They have to belittle her. They have to beat her down emotionally. But the spirit, who is revealed to be Evanora, she's gonna start battling Alice. Alice has decided to conjure up her powers. Again, I don't know how any of this is happening. And they start fighting each other, blasting different Harry Potter-esque magic. Agatha unfortunately wins and takes out Alice. Alice is dead. She was the worst character in the show, so I don't care, but most of these characters kind of suck anyways. Let's move on. In the last few seconds, it's revealed who another spirit is now present. Nicholas Scratch, Agatha's son. Mm, powerful stuff. He pleads for his mom to stop killing Alice, but too little, too late. She's dead zo. All right, they beat the task somehow. Again, I don't even know what the, what the goal was here. But, but they won, so they're out of the cabin on their merry way, another witch down. They're about to be a lot more witches down because teen boy is pissed that Agatha had done that to Alice. Agatha goes up to the teen and is like, like you wouldn't do the same, you're a piece of trash too. Teen boy gets pissed, turns fiery blue, and bodies Agatha into the ground just like Mrs. Hart, then takes out the other two witches. Teen Boy finally reveals his true form. A crown forms atop his head with his blue eyes and sparkly fingers. It's either Wanda Maximoff herself or part of her kin. Probably her son. It's probably one of the, the boys. I don't know. I, I... But yeah, this was the big reveal. The teen is a Maximoff, I'm guessing, based on the crown and nothing else. Some bad witches were killed and a possibly good witch or bad, we don't know. I, I don't really know what's happening, is still left alive. We'll see what happens next week. Positives about the episode. Uh, I really liked the setting this time. The cabin was cool. The outfits were fun. Um, the Salem Seven are, you know, they're, they're there. That's, that's a thing. That's all right. And that's about it. I don't know where this show goes from here. There's only a few episodes left and then we can be done and on to the next incredibly mediocre Disney Plus property. We'll see what they have to offer. But there's the recap of episode five of Agatha All Along. A pretty harmless, useless show at the end of the day. If people are enjoying it, I wanna hear about it in the comments. Are you still on this bandwagon or have you gotten off? I don't know why I'm still here to be honest with you. Like the video if you want, subscribe to the channel. I post tons of movie reviews, TV show playbacks when I can, and there's some interest in them. I tried The Penguin. I gave it two episodes. I really like the show. I'm still watching it, but no one watched those recap videos. So I have to go where the audience is. And unfortunately, I guess they're watching Agatha over The Penguin. All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.